welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today we're talking solar storms. Are you prepared for a solar storm? It is actually quite a beautiful day out today, wouldn't you think? I mean, look at the clouds. It's a gorgeous day. Yeah, you know, I mean, what do we got to worry about? We, you know, I mean, there's nothing going on out there. We're in a grand solar minimum, right? I mean, nothing can happen during a grand solar minimum, can it? Well, the scientists all believe that, you know, we are, well, way overdue. The last major solar storm that actually hit this country, or this world, I should say, was back in 1859. And at that point in time, the only thing we really had was telegraphs, and, and that fried everything. They had to replace them all. So, in today's society, well, it could happen again. You know, a solar flare, boom, comes off the, the sun. Comes off the sun and arrives here in an eight to ten minutes. Makes us have these beautiful, beautiful lights in the sky that are seen all over the world, from the North Pole to the South Pole. But they're just gorgeous. They just kind of go across the sky. What we don't really realize yet is, is that all of a sudden it is heating up. It's superheating the atmosphere and all that energy and magnetic energy and gamma rays and everything else are all working their way down to the surface. First thing they're gonna take out is our power grid. The power grid's gonna start going down. You know, all those lines and, and telephone poles and everything else, transformers, anything has to do with electric and the way we get it from the power plants and everything else will be fried. I mean, completely fried, folks. There'll be nothing left of it. It is going to take them forever to get this all done and for them to redo the whole system. Think about this. They're going to have to redo the whole system basically around the world. Unreal. And then you start to think about, you know, even the wind farms that they've put up, those things are going to be gone. All your electrical lines and everything else will be gone. Anything that is electrical that is running through the ground or anything else, it's all going to get fried because the current is going to ride through that. Now we come to your cell towers. What will you do without your cell phone? All right, with no cell phone, no 5G folks, and everything else, what are you going to do? You can't Google anything. Do you know how to survive without Googling it? It's a good question might want to get going on that one so you're prepared. Because when this does happen and this does take place, think about how long it's going to take them to get those systems back up. Now, your cell phone may still work. It just can't connect to anything. So it's useless, right? I mean, what is it going to do? You know, you turn around and there's all these different types of situations that are going to be happening. There's going to be fires everywhere. No, but nobody's going to be able to contact anybody. There's no CB radios. There's no, you know, emergency management. There's no radios. There's no nothing. There is nothing, folks. It's all fried. We're even talking your radio frequencies, your television frequencies, all that type of stuff. So nobody's going to have any type of information and nobody's going to be able to get any type of information unless it is brought by word of mouth or if we really go back to the really old days by pigeon. The next thing you know it's going to happen, remember, your internet service is completely gone. Google has gone away. It isn't there anymore. You can't order from Amazon and get a new system because it, it doesn't exist. Companies like Amazon will be completely shut down. They don't have a store. They no way to make cash. You know, you're going to be setting... A lot of people are going to be going around trying to plug stuff in, flipping their breakers, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, you know, because it's probably going to happen so fast. More than likely, the government isn't going to want us to know about it until just about the time it happens and it's too late to be prepared. So you keep plugging everything in and trying everything and it just doesn't work, you know. And if you're lucky enough to own one of those fancy new cars that you have to plug in and charge so that you can drive it for maybe 100 miles or so, well, guess what? You're not going nowhere. And if you're really, really lucky enough to have any type of solar panels on your property or that are portable that you can charge. Now, most people don't have like a solar farm like we're seeing behind me here, you know, but if you have these type of things that you can charge your battery banks, 
Um, you can charge batteries. You can charge a lot of different things. They come with a lot of different adapters and everything else. You may be able to run your whole house. It just depends on what kind of system you do have. You will survive. You will be able to sit back and enjoy those northern lights. But be careful, folks, because with those northern lights, and if you have lights on in your home, you are a number one target. So you may want to keep it low on the key, if you know what I'm saying, because when everything starts to go south it is not going to be a good time and the next thing you know we're going to be going back in time if you get what i'm saying here we are sitting by the fire probably by a candle hopefully you have a place where you can have a fire so you can either stay warm you can cook you can do other things you can survive now speaking of survival you have to be prepared folks and I'm going to give you a little tip and show you a little trick on how you can make your own little solar flare Faraday box. And hopefully it can save you a little bit of heartache. That's coming up next. Okay, so while we're getting everything ready to show you how to make your own Faraday cage at home, I'm going to go over a quick list that I put together to help you out if you do have any questions on solar storm emergency preparedness. Okay, now this is just like a quick list that you can go by. It kind of goes right along with your own survival supplies that you're going to need. But let's just get going and start right off. The first thing you're going to want is cash, folks. You got to make sure you have that green back. If you need flashlights and extra batteries, you want to make sure you have battery powered lamp or lanterns. All right, AM, FM, battery-powered radio. And a crank one would be great, so you could just crank that sucker right up. Battery-powered smoke and CO detectors, because you want to make sure that you have some way to make sure that if there's something going on in your house, you get notified, especially if it's the middle of the night, if you get what I'm saying. you got to have first aid kits, folks, manual can opener, road maps, address books, paper printouts, and financial records, and insurance records. That is very important because if the grid is down, there is no power. You cannot access that stuff online. Make sure that you do have a basic toolkit, whatever you want to put in it that you know how to use. All right, toilet paper and other toiletry items. That's kind of a give me, but I just figured I'd throw it out there because I know everybody has plenty of that. Full containers of gasoline, as much as you could probably possibly store safely. A gas grill with several full propane canisters. Now, I'm not talking the one pounders, folks. We're talking the 20 to 50 pound tanks. And make sure that you have a safe place to store them. More the better. All right, you want to make sure you have your baby supplies. Don't forget about those little rug rats, all right? Pet supplies, you know, the ones, the ankle biters, make sure you got stuff for them too. Refills for your medications. Lord knows when you're going to be able to get back to the doctor or maybe when you can get to the pharmacy to pick up more meds. So if you have uh, extra medication or anything like that, that would be a bonus. Portable or whole house generators. These are great as long as you do have the fuel to run them. So in order to make your own Faraday cage or box homemade, all you need, as you see here, is aluminum foil and a cardboard box. I would suggest using the extra heavy duty aluminum foil if you're going to be doing this. I wouldn't use any cheap flimsy stuff because you gotta figure you're putting your electronics and things in this box. So what you do is you take and you load your box up and you put your electronics and everything in there. Then you take the aluminum foil and you wrap it around the box creating a barrier that the electronic waves cannot get through. And once you have done that, you have secured your electronic goods. Now, you need a lot of aluminum foil to do this. Another easy way to do this is if you go to the local hardware store and pick yourself up a metal can. Now on this one, you're doing the reverse. You're going to take and put a cardboard box lining inside and you're going to go around and you're going to just make sure that the whole thing is covered with cardboard, cut it out so it fits down in there nice and neat. Might have to get a little creative and then you put the lid on it and voila, you have your story.